There are good reasons why students find literature reviews a daunting task. Whether you're writing a standalone paper for a class, a shorter review for an article, or even a longer one for a thesis or a dissertation, literature reviews can seem an insurmountable series of steps, and each source can start to look the same as the next. One way to help manage the literature review is to have a strong annotated bibliography. A good annotated bibliography helps the researcher organize sources, but it's very important to note that an annotated bibliography is not the same thing as a literature review. A literature review is a means of guiding your research through the literature to a specific point, to your research question. I like to imagine that I'm a tour guide for my readers, taking them through points of interest that culminate to my research question. We're looking at the form of literature review that precedes an empirical form of inquiry, but there are other kinds as well. Some literature reviews are standalone works, where the literature serves as data for analysis. In this case, however, we're thinking of the review of literature as part of a larger empirical study. These can be rather short. Some journals will want something as short as a paragraph. Others can be very long. Your dissertation will dedicate an entire chapter to a review of the literature. The best literature reviews are those that follow a pathway from understanding the larger context of the research to scholarship that investigates the topic to controversies or even theoretical frameworks. Good literature reviews provide the reader with more than an overview of the discussion. They increasingly narrow the reader's attention to the research question. I am most impressed with literature reviews where, by the time the gap has been described in the literature, I say to myself, you know, someone needs to look at X. And then the authors state, our research question was X. One should spend a good deal of energy into organizing the literature review. In too many instances, students will organize literature by author. They'll simply report on a series of others' research from source to source. This is not a literature review. It's a narrative arrangement of an annotated bibliography. Good literature reviews, however, are an argument. They lead the reader through the relevant literature and toward the author's reason for inquiry. So how does one do this work? First, one should have a clear idea of the research question. A well-crafted research question makes a meaningful literature review possible. A poorly crafted research question leaves the literature review without a destination. I often tell students, everything is easy if you put the time and reflection into a good research question. Second, one needs a good set of notes or annotations. I like to map the main ideas of the literature review, first by listing all the topics that I intend to address. There are ways to do this with software or a big whiteboard, but there's nothing wrong with creating a whole bunch of note cards and arranging them on the floor. Next, arrange those topics into a kind of logic model. Notice here how I've rearranged the topics from broader treatments of the themes toward narrower issues. I've rotated the triangle here so that it moves from left to right. The topic is narrowing as I move through the literature. Then I find the most meaningful path through these topics. My actual outline will be linear, so I find the line. Here's an example of a map I used for an actual research project. I wanted to organize the topics from issues of context to issues of theory, and then bring the context and theory together to the research question. The literature review is narrowing, topic by topic, to the research question. Here's an example outline of a literature review created by Galvan based upon an article by McVeigh and Copeland. You can see how the literature review moves from broader topics of smoking, menopause, and health to more specific issues of weight gain, to symptoms of menopause, and smoking cessation, to the final and very narrow point of smoking cessation research for women who are experiencing or have experienced menopause. Once I've created the outline, I can go back to the literature and create a review where my sources interact with one another. I'm not merely reporting on source A and then source B and so on. Rather, I'm reporting on the issues related to my topic, and the sources are participating in the conversation together. One last note worth considering is the style of writing for the literature review. Of course, the writing should be in an academically formal style. I usually try to avoid the first person, I or we, and always avoid the second person, you. Whenever possible, write in precise and direct language. And if you need to use jargon, make sure that you A, 
define the jargon, and B, use it correctly. A literature review is more than a summary of others' work. It is an argument that is thematically organized so that the scholarship of others creates a conversation that illustrates the relevance and importance of your own research question. So consider taking the position of a tour guide and lead your reader to the promised land, your well-crafted and carefully considered research question. Thank you.